Warning, the following video you're about to watch contains Avengers Endgame spoilers. So if you haven't seen the film, then it's probably the best idea to turn it off now. But if you have, then keep on watching. You'll enjoy it. Hey guys, how are we all doing? Today is the day Avengers Endgame got released. I in fact went to the midnight screening of Avengers Endgame. I was lucky enough to go to the double bill, which I saw Infinity War and then Endgame. Um, E.g. the big Endgame poster right there. And my Marvel Studios t-shirt. Yeah, so um, we're rocking and we're rolling. This here is also an amazing a Captain America drawing um, that my auntie and my uncle got me as a birthday present. And then I've got the amazing Hammer of Doom. Um, but no, guys. <laughs> But no, guys, I am seriously here today to talk about the top 10 moments, in my opinion, of Avengers Endgame. So after I finished watching it, I wrote down I wrote down a list. After I finished watching it, I wrote down a list of my top 10 moments that I thought Endgame showed. So should we start off? Should we start off? I think we shall. Boom. So number 10. Thor went for the head. So in the first opening, like... Like, the first opening 10 minutes of the film, we see Hawkeye with his family. His family turned to dust. Um, and then we also see Thor and the other Avengers going to Thanos' farm. Where Thanos has indeed has the gauntlet still, but no stones. Um, because he snapped again. He snapped his fingers once again, destroying the stones. Because he did not need them. And then... As he was talking through that, as he was talking about snapping his fingers, Thor came out of nowhere and boom, Thanos' head was chopped off. So, and then Thor said, after that, see, I told you I'd go for the head, which made people in the cinema laugh. Everyone in the cinema were laughing at that part because he, he said, I finally went for the head. So yeah, <laughs> so that was, that was number 10 moment for me. That was probably one of the best, like probably one of the quickest deaths in the film I've ever seen. I was like, wait a minute, are they just going to roll the credits? Is that it? Is that it done? Is that it done? I thought it was going to be like that, but no, the start, the film was absolutely amazing. And that head cutting off reminded me of Ned Stark's in Game of Thrones. So number nine, I'm going to call this one, I called it Back to the Future is bullshit. Um, just because there was a reference to Back to the Future. Ant-Man and Tony Stark were talking about basically travel time travel and how they could go back in time to get the stones to then come back into the future and everyone's still alive and basically Ant-Man said don't pick up don't pick up any sports magazines when you go back in time and Tony Stark was like is that to the back to the future reference and he's like yeah and he was like it's not like that it's absolutely bullshit so that's why I called this title back to the future is bullshit so my main overall point for number nine is basically Ant-Man basically came up with the idea of time travel and Tony Stark figured out using his science and science skills, how to time travel, and then went back to the Avengers base and helped the Avengers go back in time. So my eighth moment, guys, is Baby Stark. So I've called it Baby Stark because Tony Stark has a child. So there was a scene, they were basically it cuts from five years in the future. Tony Stark isn't part of the Avengers base anymore because he has a massive falling out with Captain America because he was asking Captain America why he wasn't there helping Tony out. So Tony... Gives Cap his arc reactor and he leaves. Um, and he has a little daughter. He has a little girl. And she was wearing a blue Iron Man mask, which were peppers, which he gave to her as a present. But she was running around in it like a mini Iron Man. Um, so it was really cute. It was honestly really cute. And he settled down and he had a family. He had him, Pepper, and his little girl. Um, and it was honestly amazing to see Stark finally had his family that he wished for. In Infinity War, if you remember, he had a dream that Pepper was pregnant and he had his own family. That, five years later, that became reality. So yeah, that's my eighth moment. I know it's not a big one, but basically I'm happy for Tony because he had a little girl, which he always wanted. He always wanted a baby. Number seven is called The Merging of Minds. You're probably wondering why I've called it that. See the Avengers looking to build their team back up and they need a scientist because they found out how to time travel. But the, but the other thing is, they don't have anyone to help them out due to the fact Tony Stark doesn't want any involvement in it just because he's got a daughter and he's got a little, and a wife, sorry, a <laughs> little. Tony Stark doesn't want any involvement because he's got a little girl and he's got his wife and he wants to settle down with his family. So what the Avengers do is, they go to a cafe 
where they see the Hulk, but it's not just the Hulk. It is Bruce Banner in the Hulk's body. So it's a so it's a Hulk that can talk, that can have nice conversations, that's got the brain of Bruce Banner, and he's got the uh, and he's got like the detail of Bruce but in Hulk's body. And he's kind of a celebrity in the diner we were getting because kids were wanting photos with him, but they weren't wanting photos with Ant Man and they refused to have a photo with Ant Man, so Ant Man gave him the phone back and said, Right, you don't want a photo with me? That's fine. I don't want to have one with you either. So yeah, that's basically the merging of minds. I thought that was an amazing scene because it happened all the way through the film. Bruce was in the Hulk's body, not mentally, but physically. So the Hulk was Bruce Banner and Bruce Banner was pretty much the Hulk. So that was an amazing scene in the film and that lasted out the entire duration of Endgame. So number six, I've called this title the Soul Stone Gambit because it's the main scene well, pretty much one of the main scenes, in my opinion, in the Endgame film. It's the battle between Hawkeye and Black Widow, basically, to get the Soul Stone. So, if you remember in Infinity War, Thanos has to sacrifice someone they love to get the Soul Stone. But, they, the, but basically, the Avengers have gone back in time, and it was Hawkeye and Black Widow who went back to the planet to get fetch the Soul Stone before Thanos did. And the... And the, and the um, and the stone keeper was there and basically what they had to do is he told them the same scenario as what he did to Thanos. You have to sacrifice someone you love to get the soul stone. So a soul for a soul. And Hawkeye and Black Widow looked at each other, both wanting to sacrifice their lives. So there was a mini fight going on where basically Black Widow was going to run off the edge. Hawkeye sh like shot an arrow, moved it to the side. Hawkeye ran off the edge of the cliff. But Black, Black Widow used, her, used Hawkeye's grapple to grapple him back to the rock and were holding onto his hand. He didn't want to let go of her, but she told him to do it. So he let go of, Bla of Black Widow's hand and Black Widow died, unfortunately, in that film. And she basically sacrificed her life for the Soul Stone. And I thought that was an amazing scene in the film because it showed the battle of friendships and loved ones to see who would make the human sacrifice to save the world. Number five, um, I don't think this should be near the top because there was more stuff in the film that was bet like bigger, bigger than this. But number five to me was the final boss fight. So the final boss fight included everybody in the fight. So Thanos brought his massive army, his army that he took to New York, everyone, arrived captain america was stood there on his own like right i'm gonna do this and then suddenly you see the you say hear someone go on your left and then basically what happens is all these portals from doctor strange like the doctor strange portals came out of nowhere and wakanda was in there the planet was in there T titan they came from titan so spider-man the guardians all them came back all the wakandans came back and there was loads more sorcerers like Doctor Strange's, there were a ton more sorcerers. And was there anyone else? Was there anyone else? The Valkyrie. The Valkyrie came back. Oh my god, that was amazing. That that was that was amazing. You saw her on a horse going down, ready to kill people. And that basically was the bit probably one of the biggest fights in Marvel cinematic history I've ever seen. And everybody got a scene. So you'd probably be like, wait a minute. It was the big fight, but every main character in that film in that scene got some camera camera time so you see everybody fighting which was absolutely amazing to see this big fight going on spider-man peter parker using his um, iron spider suit to the max maximum potential you saw um dr strange and all these sorcerers um absolutely annihilating people you saw all the wakandans and then you saw the valkyrie it was honestly one of the greatest fights I have pretty much ever seen. Number Thor. Number Thor. Ah, yeah, I might as well call this. Number Thor. Um, number four. <laughs> I've called this um, Thor B City. You're probably wondering, like, wait a minute, Thor B City? Why is he calling it Thor B City? Pretty much, I'll tell you right now. Thor gets fat. So basically, Thor becomes depressed due to the fact he should. He knew he was wrong. He should have aimed for Thanos' head instead of his chest. He was basically depressed because he thinks it's his fault that everybody died. So he was all depressed. And he starts making his own 
new Asgard because 50% of the population has been gone has gone. Um, there's loads more space. So he starts building his new Asgard and Rocket and the new Bruce slash Hulk banner um, arrive on this new Asgard to go see Thor. They knock on his door and they go in and then you say Korg and Meek playing Fortnite. They're actually playing Fortnite um, and Thor is sat in a chair with a big massive beer belly and a big bushy beard and long blonde hair um, because he's been drinking alcohol and he's been eating so many snacks. He hasn't been exercising, hasn't been fighting, so he grew fat playing video games with Korg and Meek. And it was a shock. It was a bizarre because Marvel, Thor is known as like the most like biggest muscleist Avenger. But this but this endgame, he was probably one of the fattest Avengers. In no offense to you, Thor, but you were pretty huge, but you still played an amazing part. But it was good to see the comedy of you running around the old Asgard when you went back in time. Fat. I honestly thought it was hilarious. Um, but no, no, number four is Thor B City. So number three, this is my my personal opinion. This is my number one, like number one. But I'm gonna do it as number three, just because it's not a big scene. I, well, it's one of the biggest scenes in the film. So basically, as you know, if you remember in the Edge of Ultron, um, Thor lets everyone try and pick up his hammer and as you can see and as you knew iron man couldn't pick it up war machine couldn't pick it up and everybody else but if you remember captain america lifted it like nudged it just a tiny bit scaring thor and what happened in this final scene was thanos in the final boss fight snaps captain america's shield in half of his sword so he had half a shield but thor was getting um with his Stormbreaker, was getting his Stormbreaker shoved in his chest by Thanos. And suddenly, as Captain America was on the ground, you saw this hammer whiz past Thor, and it went in Captain America's hand. And Thor f and Thor went, finally, finally. So basically, what that entitles is, Captain America is worthy of picking up Thor's hammer. And there was a good scene in the film where you saw the Stormbreaker and the other hammer, come back, it came back, and Captain America had the Stormbreaker, Thor had that one, and Thor went, no, 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 I want to swap, you have the smaller one, but no, Captain America was using Thor's hammer, and using his shield, um, and using his shield and, his, and the hammer together to make impulses, it was honestly amazing, oh, I absolutely love that scene, everybody in the cinema cheering and clapping, it was an amazing scene, and I, th and I can't believe Captain America was worthy, I bought this, this weekend at Insomnia Gaming Festival, not knowing that Captain America was worthy of welding it because Captain America is my favourite Avenger. And now I've got it, I'm glad I got it. I just need a shield now to go with it. Um, <laughs> number two, we're nearly there, guys. We're nearly there. This is called I Am Iron Man. So if you remember, I went back, I was talking about Thanos' snap. So basically, Doctor Strange was saying to Iron Man during the fight, there's only one way. I've seen it, I can't tell you where it'll change, but there's one way that we can win this fight. And Thanos gets the um, Iron Man gauntlet with all the stones on, ready to snap it. He snapped his fingers, looked at his gauntlet and went, wait a minute, all the stones were disappeared. Iron Man, when he jumped over, when he jumped over Thanos, put his glove, put his stones, on his Iron Man gauntlet. I don't know how he did it, but the stones went round his hat Iron Man suit because it's nanotech. He snapped his fingers. All of Thanos' army turned to dust. Thanos himself turned to dust. I can't believe that. I was shocked, but basically Thanos got his own piece of medicine by turning all it by Iron Man turning all his army and Thanos into dust. Basically meaning the Avengers won the fight. But there was something bad that happened. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to let you take a, a minute, a minute. Like I'm gonna let you have to take a minute to think about this one. What, if you've probably already seen it, you already know what happens. But if you don't want to watch the film and you want to know what happens, then I'm gonna let you know. When Iron Man snapped his fingers, he was in critical condition, and Iron Man, Tony Stark, died. 
it's so sad, but Tony Stark did die in Avengers Endgame. He he saved everybody, but he took the con he t- he saved everyone, but he took the consequences of dying. His little girl and Pepper. Pepper said you can now finally rest, but he fa- he he passed away. So Iron Man is dead. He's no longer in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They had a funeral for him. All the Avengers were there. Nick Fury and Captain Marvel were there. It was it was sad. It was one of the saddest parts of the film. And I'd like I said, you do need to take a breather for that one. But no, I was shocked when it happened. But Iron Man did, in fact, die. Anyway, let's get... So number one, the number one moment of the film. I do think Iron Man's death should be number one, but this one for me personally is my number one. The captain grows old. So the captain at the end of the film has all the infinity stones. He has to go back in time to give all the stones, to put all the stones back in place before it mixes up with the time, with the time scales. And as he was about to come back, so Bruce was like, he should be coming back in five. Four, three, two, one. Presses the button. Cap does not come back. He turned off his time traveler watch and he didn't come back. So the Falcon, Bucky and Hulk are like, where is he? Where is he? And the Falcon went, look over there. And Bucky was stood there and Bucky looked with the Falcon. And we see this old man sat on a bench looking at the sunset. And it was, in fact, Captain America with his shield. And the Falcon went up to him and went, do you want to tell me about her? Because he was spent, um, because he spent his, his life with Pepper. Not Pepper. Oh, I said it wrong. (laughs) (gasps) Iron Man would be pissed if he did that. So we see this old figure on the bench, still in the leather jacket, you know, rocking and rolling with his hair, nice grey hair slipped back, smiling, looking into the distance. And what happened was Captain America finally grew old. So the Falcon went over to him and was talking about him, uh, talking to him. And he said, do you want me to tell, do you want, do you want to tell me about her? And Captain America went, no, no, I don't. So basically... Captain America stayed back in the time frame that he was at and he spent his life growing old with Peggy Carter which was honestly a sad scene because you saw Steve Rogers old you saw him as an old person which was ama- which, which was emotional but amazing and he had his shield and the falcon said to him he ba- he basically said the falcon said to him I'm going to miss you Captain America and Captain America went, I'm I'm not the Captain America anymore. And he said, here, I want you to have this. He gives, he gives the Falcon his Captain America shield. And he says, it's yours now. And it was emotional because Captain America is basically give away his title to the Falcon. So basically, that's more movies coming soon. That'll be some more movies coming soon, basically about the Falcon and how he's Captain America now. But, and then after that, it cuts back in time to Captain America and Peggy in a house dancing to their final song. It was sad. It was I was happy for him because he finally got his dance with Peggy. He finally did get his dance with Peggy and he could grow old being happy knowing he had an amazing life. So that's it everyone. That's my top 10 moments for Avengers Endgame. Um Honestly, amazing film. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be seeing it again next week. Um, and basically, I can't wait. I can't wait to see it again. Even I know what happens. There's gonna be some bits that I've missed, some scenes that I've that some scenes I can't remember. But I, I well, I can remember every scene. It's Endgame for crying out loud. But you know, I might have missed some little details in the film which I don't know, which basically don't couldn't remember from last night because it was midnight screening. Um, but no, guys, I'm gonna leave you here. So this has been my tep, tep, top 10 moments of Avengers Endgame. So if you have enjoyed it, please do leave a like rating and subscribe. And I shall see you all for my next video.
So, Avengers, assemble.